Welcome to section 10.4, day one, distribution of data. Today's objectives are to look at normal distributions and standard deviation. Here we have a normal distribution. As you'll notice, it's pretty evenly spaced when you make the histogram. And we can make this nice curve through it. When you make this nice curve, it's often called a bell curve. And what this shows is that the mean, median, and mode are very close to each other and it tails off evenly in both direction. We'll be looking at other distributions tomorrow. So standard deviation. We're not gonna go into how to compute these in this class, but you need to know what the standard deviation is and how it is used to describe a normal distribution. When standard deviation is small compared to the mean, that means the data is very close to the mean, the majority of the data is very close to the mean, and the data is tight. When standard deviation is large compared to the mean, that means that curve is more spread out. That normal curve gets spread out farther and it's more of a flatter curve. Here is what a normal distribution looks like and the standard deviation. So here we have our normal distribution. The M in the middle there is showing you where the mean is. So that M is the mean. And then on the normal curve, 68% of the data is within one standard deviation of the mean, which is indicated there. 95% of the data is within two standard deviations, and 99.7% of the data is within three standard deviations. And then you have your tails, which are usually your outliers. It has the rest of that 0.3% of your data. Have to be careful with this when we do certain problems, because quite often it's going to ask you how many students scored above the second standard deviation. And you can't just go by the percentages that are shown here, we have to look at what's happening through each part of the curve. So even though it shows you 68% is within one standard deviation, if you actually go from both sides of the curve, you have to split that 68% in half, and 34% of the data is on either side of the mean in this first little box. And then it has that 95% is between the second, the minus two standard deviation and plus two standard deviations. Well, we already accounted for 68%. So if you take 95 minus 68, you get 27%. Half of that is 13.5. So this little sliver here is 13.5% on both sides. This is a symmetric curve. All right, so we have a 34% within one standard deviation of the mean on either side of the mean. And then we have a 13.5% between the first and second standard deviations. And we keep going. We do the same idea. We have 95% of the data is now accounted for. That means we have 5% left. So between the second standard deviation and the end, and negative two standard deviations in the beginning, we have to account for 5%. Half of it is on both sides. When you do the figuring out, you'll find out that this here, right here is 2.35%. And so is this. And all that's left of these outlier tails is 0.15% on both sides. So what you need to do is remember that if it's asking like how much data is within the two standard deviations, that's at 95%. But then if it says how many students scored more than two standard deviations above the mean, you would have to go to where the two standard deviations is right here and then look at the percentages to the right and 2.35% and 0.15% added together is that you'd have 2.5% of the students scored more than two standard deviations above the mean. If we were to ask how many students scored less than one, minus one standard deviation from the mean, we would look at the left side because the left sides are negative standard deviations We'd have to add up the 0.15, the 2.35, and the 13.5. Or you just take 50% minus 34, and you'd find out that if you're less than one standard deviation to the left, you would get 16%. So when it's asking questions about how many scored more or less, you can't just use the 68, 95, and 99.7. You have to look at what's actually happening. That's why I've added these different percentages in here. So you guys can refer back to this and see what's actually happening. We're gonna do a few examples so you can see how this works. All right, so on a standardized test, we have a normal distribution of test data, has a mean of 74 and a standard deviation of nine. 
And it says what test values are within one standard deviation. If you recall our curve looks like this, roughly, and we have our mean in the middle, and then we're going to one standard deviation on each side. Well, our standard deviation is nine, so we're gonna subtract nine from 74, and we're gonna add nine to 74, and this will give us our range of our data values within one standard deviation. This is 65, this is 83, so the scores from 65 to 83 are within one standard deviation. We want to do two standard deviations. We have to multiply the nine by two because we're two away, two standard deviations. So we have 74 minus 18, which is 56. We have 74 plus 18, which is 92. This is 56 to 92. And then within three, same idea, but now we're going to multiply by three, so we have 27. This is 47. We're going to add 27, and we get uh, 101. So from 47 to 101. Those scores are within three standard deviations. All right, on a standardized test, we have the normal distribution of test data with a mean of 67 and a standard deviation of 7. What test values are within 68% of the mean? If you recall, 68% is within one standard deviation. So we're just going to take 67 minus 7, 67 plus 7. And if you do this, you should find your data is within 67 minus 7 is 60. 67 plus 7 is 74. So what test values are within 95% of the mean? 95% is two standard deviations. So we have to add and subtract 14 from our mean, so 67 minus 14, 67 plus 14. And when we do this, we get 53. This is 81. So we're 53 to 81 away. Those are all the test scores at within 95%. And the last one, we're doing 99.7. So it's three standard deviations. So we have to do 67 minus 21. 67 plus 21, and we get 46, and we're going to 88. So 99.7% of the test scores fell between 46 and 88. This is just using percentages instead of using the standard deviation itself, but these correspond to your first, second, and third standard deviations. Here we have that 250 students took a test. The test data had a normal distribution with a mean of 58 and a standard deviation of 6. How many students scored above a 64 and what percentage is this? So when you look at this, we want to score 64. If you take the standard deviation and add it to the mean, you get 64. We are one standard deviation above the mean. If you recall, one standard deviation, here's our mean, here's our one standard deviation. Well, the mean is in the middle, so there's 50% already accounted for here. And then if you recall from that slide with the normal distribution, this piece right here is 34%. So it means we counted for 84% of the data, which means the remaining piece right here is 16%. To find out how many students scored above 64, we take our 16% and multiply it by the total number of test takers. So we have 250 times 0 0.16. Remember to change your percentages to decimals. And when you do this and put in the calculator, you will find out we have 40 students that scored better than a 64. How many students scored below 46? Well, again, if you look at 46, standard deviation is 6. If we take 58 minus 46, we find we have 12. So we are negative 2 standard deviations. Again, if we look at our curve, our mean is here. And we have our 1 SD. Should put negative in front of it, negative 2 standard deviations. Then this question of what you have from the, the previous slide, we've already done this math, we already talked about it. So until you get to the second standard deviation, this piece over here is 2.5%. That adds that 0.15 and the 2.35 together. So 2.5% is in, is below two standard deviations. So we're going to take our 250 and multiply it by 2.5%, which is 0.025. When you do this, you find out you have 6.25 students. We will round this, so six students scored less 
than a 46 on this test. Finally, we says create a normal curve given the mean and standard deviation. So if we are given a mean and a standard deviation, we can create the normal curve from it. Now, we'll use, we're just doing a sketch. We don't have actual numbers other than what the mean deviation are, but we know where the mean goes. We know what the standard deviations are, so we can create this, this normal distribution. We know the mean is 74, so right in the middle of our graph would be your mean right here. If we do one standard deviation above it, our next number is 74 plus 6, which is 80. And then our next number above that would be 86. And then above that would be 92. We're going the other way. We take 74 minus 6, which is 68. 68 minus 6, which is 62. Minus 6 again to get 56. This is a rough sketch of what the normal distribution would look like. Now, sometimes the curve won't be there. You just have to make the curve. It's a sketch. Make it look decent. But this is what we're looking for. You identify where the mean goes. You also identify where the first, second, and third standard deviations are, both to the left and to the right of the mean. That is all for 10.4 day one. Uh, today, we looked at normal distribution and standard deviation. We looked at what the percentages are on the normal curve. Looked at how we can create a curve from a standard deviation and a mean. That is all. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.